Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Carrie Craddock. I'm the Senior Manager of Programming here at the festival. We're very fortunate to have a big stage party for a Q&A this afternoon. Before we get started, I'd just like to take a couple minutes to let you know how it's going to go. We're going to start with some questions on stage. Before we turn it over to you, we need to keep the questions on point about the film, please. And uh, please raise your hands high and speak as loudly and clearly as you can. If you keep your questions brief, we'll have time for more of them. And I'll try to repeat them for the benefit of everyone else here. Okay, without further ado, please join me in welcoming back to the stage the director of Bell, Emma Asante. producer Damien Jones, who I think I should have also <laughs> brought on here. Was the original painting of Dido Bell and Elizabeth Murray. And um, it set lots of questions going in my mind at the time. Uh, I live in Holland, and my husband had taken me to um, a wonderful exhibition which charted the history of the black subject in art um, from slave, servant, right through to main subject and news. And when I saw this 17th century painting, 18th century painting, I'm afraid, um, I realised that this was, was a really unusual painting because Dido was an equal. And it all went from there. It was a question of, you know, Damien had been trying to get the, the film off the ground, for, a film off the ground about Dido Bell for quite a long time. Um, I was very lucky that the BFI eventually recommended me um, to come on board the project. And Damien very kindly invited me to come on board the project and it all started from there. I think we're all very thankful that you did as well. I want to ask a question of all of the cast members on stage. Um, obviously, as Emma suggested, this film contains all of those beautiful things that we love about period pieces. 
but also has an underlying contradiction that she brings to the forefront. What was that like for you as cast members to negotiate that experience compared to other work you've done? Um, shall I start this off? Um, yes, uh, I uh, was obviously massively intrigued by the story, and it is a very unique one, told in a unique period. Um, and Anna had such excitement and such passion for it from the first moment we spoke about it, it was clear that she had a very good image in her mind of what she wanted to create, and I consider myself very lucky to have uh, come on the journey with her, eh? What I became aware of was that um, all the characters, you understand where they are all coming from. I think it's, it's so beautifully delineated and it's fair and, and right. Have I answered the question? I can't even remember what you did. <laughs> but that's what I want to say. And, um, I had a very nice time, apart from the windswept hair bit in front of the island. I love it. <laughs> well, I've, I've worked with very few um, lady directors in my time, and then I met Anna, and I was bowled over by her, her vision, her clarity, and um, a wonderful script that she'd written. And, uh, it was everything that I'm interested and passionately keen on. Um, the period is beautiful, but more important, the message of the film. And so it was a great privilege to work with her and this extraordinary cast. Point of view of 
a young woman who doesn't have the power benefit of sight, hindsight. She doesn't, she doesn't know what equality is. She doesn't know what human rights are. And we sense with her just a deep, deep, profound human knowledge that something is very, very, very wrong. And, and everybody around her, she's surrounded by people who love her, but they are racist. Society is racist. And I think it's a unique moment of change. It's a very interesting, you know, it sort of hangs on a legal technicality. But it's, um, it's a unique moment. Um, I don't particularly like uh, period films, but <laughs> when I saw this postcard and delved deeper into the whole story, it seemed to like tick all the, the boxes of that Jane Austen world and that period romance that people love so much, but also had something really important to say that I think still obviously resonates today. So for me, it's been a hell of a journey. Uh, I think it does say something very important about our place in the world and self-identity. It's also wonderful to be involved in something where all the elements come together beautifully. All departments in front of the camera and behind all just come together to create this beautiful chemistry. I'm really proud of this film and this wonderful cast has done masterfully. Rachel Portman as a composer is somebody that I actually never dreamed I would make a film that she wanted to work on. Um, we didn't know if we could get Rachel. Um, we didn't know if she'd be too busy or if she'd like the film enough. I knew that her music could, could represent the spirit of the film that I wanted to make. And when, I, when I'm working, when I'm writing, when I'm directing, I'm listening to music constantly. That kind of really grounds me in, in the period or the, or the atmosphere or the circumstances of my characters. And Rachel's music has always done that for me, but particularly did that for me with Belle. Um, she was the first person we went to and she said yes immediately. Um, and, you know, thank you for acknowledging her because she has done an incredible job with this film. And you're quite right, it, it is another character in the movie and it was very important to me that, that it should be. Thank you. I, I joke not, sorry, I, I joke not, we did have one composer who threw the hat in the ring who suggested bongo drums and everything. <laughs> If I wanted African drums as a theme tune uh, <laughs> to, uh, to, the, to the film, it was not really a consideration. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do we have another question? I'll make sure I get to people on the balcony. Uh, 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 Sorry, can you stand up? that, you know, a whole box can be opened on a, a whole 
sort of variety of levels uh, that is about a history that belongs to all of us that so far we haven't really been able to tell because for whatever reason it hasn't seemed appropriate to have um, a cinematic movie that, that has black characters as these that are not slaves or, or servants. So for me, I hope it will become a, a normal part of my process now when I'm looking at projects um, that I wish to do, that I will be able to look at other projects that feature black, uh, a black experience in history. And, you know, for me, I hope that Belle does well. There are a number of other historic movies um, that are bit on here at the festival. I, I hope they all do well, because the better they do, the more chance we have of being freed up to be able to reveal that history, explore that history, and tell those stories, which, as I say, belong to all of us, really. It's, a, it's all of our history. You know, and the fact that a black character may lead or may feature in a story does not make it a niche film. It makes it, uh, you know, a film about our history.